So here today, on top of this amazing dome on Lombok, with Sunny Janssen, all the way from Sweden, who's project manager of this, this development. Correct. Sunny, thanks for taking the time. So glad we could get connected and uh, be here to, to make this happen. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for being here. Such a pleasure, man. So um, this is Dome Lombok, right? That's the official name. That's the official name. Dome Project Lombok. Dome Project on Lombok. And you be, I mean, we're literally sitting on the roof of a dome now looking at this amazing view and it's just exquisite and the sun will be setting down over there shortly and it's fabulous. And this dome, you know, all the structure of it's complete but you've still got some lights and some little bits and pieces to finish off. Yeah. And then I can see just over there another three going to be built and another three going there. Yes, this is planned for the next three, four months. Uh -huh. So that's three domes over there and another three there, so six domes in total. Yep. And then we're going to develop the upper part and develop the lower part, hopefully, the same year. Man, it's just such a fabulous concept. How did this... So what I want to cut, I'm going to kind of find out really um, how this all came about, how you got involved, and why, why domes? I mean, most houses are kind of boxes, right? And so I definitely want to hear about that. Um, and how this is solving because you know humanity is facing some some big challenges and I want to get all negative about it But we want to really want to look at some really cool solutions and have a look at how this answers to some of the biggest Problems of our time and then have a look at what's the opportunity for people to get involved people who like this kind of thing to say Hey, that looks really cool. I'd love to be love to be part of that somehow yeah. So that's that's kind of the agenda um, For our chat, but let's start with you. Let's have a look at, at how you got I mean growing up in Sweden and now living in Lombok in Indonesia What's up? <laughs> I, I was living in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, I lived there for four years yeah. and I was uh, doing 3D renderings okay. uh, of bathrooms for the guys that started this project, mm -hmm. David and Christian. And I studied industrial design and I did facility design and interior design. Uh, so one way or the other I was doing the drawings and then they said, are you kind of interested in doing the 3D drawings for this project. And then as soon as I heard it, I was sold. I was like wow. interested from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so I always had this interest in sustainable green tech solutions. Um, <clears throat> and that's how it all started. But it was kind of a one and a half month decision. I had to give up my life back home in Sweden. Yeah. And I had to decide in one and a half month if I was gonna say yes. And I did. Got six weeks, in or out. In or out. So at wow. one time that I visited uh, Indonesia, I had never been here before. And it's a long way, huh? It's a long way. <laughs> I, I mean, I traveled a lot, but I'd never been to Lombok. Okay. And I kind of liked it from the start. Yeah, nice. So, so what was it about this project that made you go, I'm super interested, yes, and definitely given this serious consideration? Because it's different in every way. Uh, it's, like you said, it's, it's so tempting to build traditional, like, and that's actually what they're really good at in Indonesia, uh, concrete columns, concrete bricks boxes. in the middle. Yeah. And we have this amazing view. Yeah. So you can see the other people around us are doing exactly that. They're making these concrete boxes, yeah. which is absolutely fine. It's beautiful, gorgeous, infinity pools. But we wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. And especially David and Christian, they have a really big interest in uh, building as sustainable as possible. Mm. And the earth back uh, adobe superstructure technique, that's how it's called, is the most, well, in our view, the most, one of the most sustainable ways of building. Wow. Because you literally use uh, the materials that are on site, yeah. the gravel, stone. Well, uh, tell me about that. Tell me through it. How's, how did this actually come into being, this thing that we're sitting on? What's the... What's the it's simple. It's uh, basically uh, you first build the foundation. Mm -hmm. So see over here that you're like digging down to get to the bedrock, right? Yes, digging correct. Digging through that, that topsoil and that crust. Yes. And uh, the foundation rings is normally done with gravel mm -hmm. and you put it in rice bags or these long tubed earth, earth back. Okay. Well, bags of rice. Yeah. And so no cement in there? Uh, in the foundation, no. Uh -huh. uh, and we might get later to that. Okay. Uh, we very soon realized this is our test dome, yep. that you do need cement. Okay. And in the beginning, we had this almost 100% no cement, only sustainable materials, yep. only locally quarried limestone, yep. 
Uh, David did tests with locally burned cement. Um, and very, very soon you find out that not every batch is the same. They have different colors. Uh, there's too, it's too rough. Uh, and it's not consistent. You can absolutely not build with the locally uh, burned cement. Uh, so there were a lot of tests done mm -hmm. to find the right consistency. But the earth bags itself are filled with uh, soil, gravel, a little bit of limestone, and a little bit of cement. Okay. So, if you the cement is maybe one bucket, yeah. and they make a big uh, pile, yeah. maybe one cubic. Uh, they mix it, yeah. and you just put it in the bags, and then you stamp it. Yeah. The cement. I mean, cement is such an interesting topic and big business in Indonesia. I think something like three or four of the. Um, out of the top 20 largest companies in Indonesia, I think three or four of them are cement companies. Wow. So, so I mean, it blew me away. I was just looking at that recently. Um, so when you guys look at when you look at cement, what's the what's the challenge with that? Why not? I mean, because it's it's everywhere. Everyone's building with it. But we also get, hey, you know, we'd rather do it in a sustainable way. So what's the what's the what's the issue? What's the problem with cement? Well, what I've what I understood yeah, sure. with cement, it's basically the energy that is used to make it, yeah. to burn it, and to quarry it, and the pollution that it's creating by digging and the limestone. Gotcha. Uh, but so actually using cement on my structure, it may not necessarily be such a bad thing, but the production of that cement took a huge toll on the environment to actually create that bag of cement that I'm using. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. But we're getting, we had a lot of discussions about this sure. and we definitely adapted our core concept and we had a 95% only local materials yeah. and we very soon realized that every single thing that has to do with foundation or water mm -hmm. kind of always needs cement mm -hmm. and that is, that is something you have to use. Mm -hmm. Uh, because your, our sustainable approach in the end has to do with a long-term strategy we want to we want to we give 50 year warranties on the houses oh, wow. actually the the coating itself and how it's the whole structure itself that it can last for a, a very long period wow so if you do it properly and if you respect the building techniques mm -hmm. it's a very very sustainable way of building uh -huh. but does it really like if we use one bucket for one cubic uh, Meter. meter of yeah. of uh, material building materials, is that is that a lot? Is that a lot to like? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's better than a hundred percent cement walls, correct? And cement pillars and floors and roofs and everything. We see so many just concrete boxes here. Yeah. And then, like like you say, beautifully done when they're mm -hmm. rendered and finished. Mm -hmm. But a lot of cement in the construction. Yeah. Okay. So you're going on. If we did that, could we could we still live with ourselves, right? Yes. And that's, that's obviously you've had some conversations and there's been some... It, it's just that we found out that specifically in the foundation, if you don't use a little bit of cement, uh, the weight, these are massive buildings. Yeah. So these are almost 40, 50 centimeter thick walls, mm. which is very good for certain things. It's, it, it protects you from the heat. It's, uh, mm. It protects you from sound from the inside. Um, but the bad part is that it's um, it's so heavy, right? It's very heavy, yeah. exactly. So sooner or later, if you build too quickly, if you build this uh, dome within a period of three months, the ideal thing would be that you have to wait for three months before you put on the final coating, because the so building kind of needs to settle. Wow! And that's one of the things that we found out that, okay. or you need a proper foundation. Yeah. So how'd you find out about the foundation? What 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 happened? Because it's some, some really good testing. <laughs> well, this is the test dome, and in all honesty, uh, we very soon find out that we were building too quick, and that if it doesn't settle enough, uh, after three, four months, it starts to crack. Hmm. And actually, the Tadalak coating doesn't matter if there's a small crack, you can always repair it, and it can still last. Once you polish it, it can still last for a okay. period of nice. up to even 100 what, years. What was the coating that you said? Tadalak. Tadalak. Yeah. What is that? It's one of our core concepts as well. Mm -hmm. So David and Martin, uh, they have a company in Sweden, Creative Coatings and Deco Material. And they're basically the biggest in Scandinavia and they, they are specialists in this specific coating. And it's an old uh, technique used mainly in Morocco. And the idea or, is that by pressing the limestone molecules, mm -hmm. and this is the thing that's so labor intensive, 
So one square meter could be up to one, half an hour of pressing with wow. plastic things. But by doing that, you press the molecules of the limestone uh, so compact, so close, that it becomes super hard. Yeah, and wow. then you basically you just need to have soap, organic soap or wax just to cover it. And then it can last for wow. a very, very long time. So what's it made of? It's just limestone? This is just limestone. Wow. Yeah. And it's actually quarried like eight kilometers away. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. So we have a few, the bricks that we use sometimes mm -hmm. for the smaller details, something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also quarried four kilometers away. That's great. Uh, or there's a lot of people I'm talking to talking about just local, local, yeah. local, local to stop the, the massive, you know, global supply chain logistics, digging stuff up here and moving it there and processing it here and stuff going all around the world and just the, yeah. the huge amount of energy that that uses. It's crazy. The That's only thing cool. that we can't use here, and we did try, and we already found out it wasn't a good idea, <laughs> is, is wood. So uh -huh. in Lombok, you don't find uh, good wood. Quality timber. Yeah. Now, I see a lot of bamboo down there in the... Yes, bamboo, we, we do. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's not locally, it's from close to the Vinjani. Near enough. Uh, but That's we treat beautiful. it... Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it looks so good. It is, yeah. It's the same. This Alang Alang also comes from very close by. Yeah. So the grass roof, uh, the bamboo, yes, definitely. Yeah. And we treat it in salt water okay. and up to one and a half month, one month. Wow. What's that do for it? Uh, it prevents termites, it prevents oh, insects really? eating it, yeah. and it has a, a natural way of coating it. So wow. because it's salt treated, the more uh, mold. I heard on Bali they're using borax for that yes, as well. Yes, almost only borax. Yeah. So the same, same outcome, same thing? Or different process? Uh, we haven't worked with borax. Okay. Um, we tried to polish the bamboo with coconut oil. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, first we have them rinse and wash it on the beach with sand and yep. to polish it as much Scrub as possible. Yep. And uh, but I think borax is a lin oil uh, and they heat it up and they drill holes in the bamboo and by heating the up the oil it kind of gets into the bamboo and then right. it, from the inside out it it's a very sustainable so way everywhere. for yeah, sure. sure. Uh, but we can use wax or we can use water-based paint um, yeah. just to prevent it from... Uh, because normally you, you need to replace bamboo every three, four years. Mm. Now it feels very dry, and, uh, but we had a really tough raining season. And this part of the roof was open so the rain could come in and uh -huh. then the, the outer parts of the bamboo was exposed to the sun. And if yeah. it's exposed to the sun, the coating... Mm. So we yes. learned. So now we extended the roof to create more of a canopy, yeah. which also prevents the dome from heating up. Mm -hmm. So it's very important There's that you... There's a beautiful space down there. Yeah, and the shade, of course. Mm. You're almost never inside the house. The, the Most of the time we spend is in the, in the outdoor kitchen, in the garden, especially in the morning. The, on the roof. On the roof. <laughs> this is definitely the sunset point. Yeah. So nice. that's what we found out, that you live mostly outside. Cool. All right, so we've done foundations, we've done outer coating. We've looked at timber and bamboo and roof. What, um, the original question was like, how do we, how do we actually build the things, the walls and the, the main structures of the house? Yeah. Let's come back to that. Cool. <laughs> I kind of diverted us there. Yeah. So by um, adding all these rice bags and in between you put barbed wire, mm -hmm. you compress, you press the soil and the earth by stamping on it. Uh -huh. And again, you compress the soil with a little bit of water, uh, not too much. Uh, it becomes really, really hard and compact. Okay. And you can kind of mold it still in this round shape. Yeah. You want to have the... So what's, you've got some boxing or something to, to hold the... No, just by hand. You have a, a line in the middle, a center point, and yep. you just keep sure that the, cent that the center... Just keep stacking yep. dirt on top. And, and then it's closer to when the, you get the to the... the barbed wires for like reinforcing, I guess, kind of hold it together? Just to hold it together, the bags itself. Once yep. the bags are settling and once they harden, it takes about a week that they get properly hard, they will... They will stay at the same position. So literally you've got big like sacks, you fill them with dirt and stack them up on top of each other and then stamp them down. That's it. And that's what the house is built out of. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so simple. And it's one of the strongest structures uh, possible. Like the shape of the dome, yep. it's proven that earthquakes and flood resisting. It's like wow. uh, they did a test in California, the Calif uh, Institute. And this is so resistant because of the round shape, the, the conic shape of the dome, that it's super resistant against earthquakes. Oh, wow. 
which makes it wow. perfectly suitable. So for is that why, I mean, if we were to use the same building technique and build square boxes, right, or other shapes, and we just stacked them up and stamped it down and did the same thing, you're saying it wouldn't be as... Yeah, you could. I mean, they have, I'm personally very interested in the rammed earth technique. Yep. They use a box and they, they use different layers of soil and they also use a little bit of concrete. Yep. Uh, but by compressing, stamping, ramming, yep. uh, they do exactly the same principle. Mm -hmm. And once you remove the box, you get this beautiful, uh, different layered oh, uh, ramped wow. earth. And I'm kind of personally more interested to, to yeah, make cool. more retaining walls in that technique. Okay, yeah, yeah. nice. It'll be perfect. So, so what's the... Um, so why, are, why are dome then? Why this, why this shape? It's That's the earthquake resistance? It's because, kind of... I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's absolutely stunning. And yes. It's absolutely unique. I'll give it that. But on the, on the technical side... It's limiting in, in, in many ways. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest archetype shapes that human has ever used. Yeah, and you can sure. find it in almost every culture. Yep. And David and Christian, they did an earth back building course. Uh -huh. And they got so fascinated and hooked on the shape. Yep. They really loved the shape. Just loved it. And most people, uh, they really like it or they don't like it because it associates a little bit with a Hobbit home, yeah. Hobbit house. It's true. Uh, but living in a dome in a round space is very, very interesting. It, it just has this, um, you lose space because you can't use a cabinet or you can't. Yeah, sure. So you have to build around in this round circle, which automatically also gives you a more of a enclosed feeling. Yeah. So you've already seen it. It looks bigger on the outside, but as soon as you go inside, it's really, really cozy and charming sure. and nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, but I've been living here for almost a year now, uh -huh. uh, before the renovation, and I really, really like it. Maybe you, we're building the bigger models with extra bedrooms yep. and a basement uh, floor for an extra room. Uh, so this is more for families and couples with children. Yeah, sure. Nice. Uh, but if you're a couple and you just want to have a private house and dome, mm. this is perfect. Beautiful. So what have you done? How have you been able to figure out? Because you're right, I mean, if we walk into a, a square room, I can put a bed here and a cupboard there and a chest of drawers here and, you know, we can have all those things. But when you've got walls that are coming like this and edges that are like that, how have you, how do we, where do I put my stuff? How, how do you kind of manage that? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's definitely a challenge. Yeah, and, uh, cool. Uh, with the Tiga well, Dome. You've been here for a year though, so you must be, you know, wearing clothes and you. Yeah. No, <laughs> I you're mean, a big guy too. I mean, you're not, you're not like a little, you're not like a little hobbit, you know, <laughs> crawling in there. <laughs> it, it's true. I mean, uh, what I found, I, I do the storage under the bed now, so okay. you can lift up the bed to use Perfect. the place under the bed to store. Yeah. I have shelves that are basically uh, made. To fit the round shape. Perfect. Uh, the bench it, it, for the bench is actually perfect because it has a nice round shape. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I make extra shelf for the speakers and the Wi-Fi and uh, all the other details. The lamps. There's a yeah. mezzanine and a floor of bamboo mm -hmm. in the middle where you can have an extra bed or you oh, can cool. put extra uh, your luggage or storage. Things up there. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's plenty of space then by the sounds of it. In the end, there's enough space. Yeah. And right. this is also uh, more of a summer. The kitchen is outdoors, the yeah, seating area is outdoors, the, the tables are out there. So uh, these kind of things to store, yes, we can yeah. do outside. So a lot of Europeans I get to speak to, uh, you know, when we, we talk about, we've been living in Bali for three years and we've got this beautiful home and the, there's no back wall on my house. Literally the whole kitchen and living area and dining room just opens out onto the stairs, onto the big deck, right onto the pool. Mm -hmm. And people go, you know, the bugs and the animals and they're kind of freaking out. What's, what's been your experience with that? You're living in your outdoor kitchen and you're, you know, you're outside most of the time. Absolutely. Uh, you have to clean after you cook. Yep. That's what I found out. Wipe down the bench. No honey, no coke <laughs> or something spilling. Uh, we have, we're going to make shelves with little thin wires to prevent ants. Uh, ants can't climb on thin wires? They can, but you, or we have, you can see there's a little gutter outside of the kitchen yeah. where, with, where water runs so uh, that they have to... They can't get, can't get over the river. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's cool. That's really smart. We have Scorpios, we have snakes, we have yeah. frogs, we have uh, once a year, there are three, four days, there are a lot of uh, grasshoppers. Oh, yeah? Little bugs, I don't know you what they're called. You got the little called. flying ants 
They come Flying through ends. like a couple of nights. Yeah, actually, year, you'll just be. We, we get it at home and probably two or three times a year and there'll just be swarms of them like millions of them yes. and the geckos are going crazy you get geckos here too i'll bet <laughs> yeah you see yeah. they live everywhere yeah. they like all these little corners and yeah but i, I like geckos they oh, they're they cool yeah. yeah yeah and and why they haven't I mean, been attacked or zero. bitten or uh, it's, no yeah I mean, you live literally, I remember when I came here the first time, they already built the dome uh, before I started to renovate and build the extra bedroom. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if nobody's living here for a period of seven months or maybe even a year, yeah. yes, the animals take over. Yeah, so there sure. were Scorpios and we found a snake skin in the electricity cabinet <laughs> uh, or like, but as soon after that, I've never encountered any of them. So. Yeah. I think as soon as you start living here, it, it doesn't yeah. like, happen. Cool. We have a lot of monkeys though. And, okay. Uh, regarding the permaculture concept, which yeah. is one of the main things that we want to uh, develop, that is a serious problem. So we built this nursery over there to prevent monkeys eating the, the green leaves, the young leaves from the growing trees. Okay, just a nursery to protect the, yeah. the baby plants. Yeah. And they, in one lunch break, when I was away for two hours, they ate like a six six meter high banana tree and they just knocked it over and just because in the summer it gets so dry they, they're basically looking for water yeah and now we're thinking about having instead of fight or fighting them uh trying to find a solution to 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 make sure they feed can them. drink water and, and feed them yeah nice Beautiful. so we just covered the banana leaves you can see the bananas are growing they're almost ready yep and yeah, I, nice. I took off the oh wow the bag because this is to prevent the monkeys seeing the bananas. So it's, it's really true that we're living with animals yeah. and uh, the neighbor had Nature's a... Nature's wild. We had this compost corner over there and we want to have six or seven chi chickens. Mm -hmm. And then the neighbor told me that one day uh, one snake was with a very big belly laying. So there are snakes here, so... Yeah. I had all the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you can see we build a new fence here. Uh, we build yep. this aquaponic system in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. As soon as we're gonna build the fence over there in the road, mm -hmm. it's not like this is gonna be a, a wild. Um, no, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm. You're living with the jungle, not in the jungle. Correct. Yeah, nice. No, yeah. A lot of farmers will have dogs too to keep the yep. rats and mice and snakes and monkeys yeah. and take care of a lot of stuff. Yeah. You get some dogs. There are like there's a batch of dogs here uh, every single morning around 12 that, that walk here. They patrol. Yeah. Uh, but I had a dog last year. Yeah. Unfortunately, it died. Yeah. Uh, but for sure, we're gonna get a dog. That's cool. Yeah. We've got we've got a bunch of dogs back home. They have cool. A whole pack that live at our place. They're Where awesome. do you live in? In Bali. Bali. Yeah. In Ganya, yeah. on the beach called Saba. This little nice. beach, just right away in the village, away from everything. Yeah, nice. It's really lovely. Cool. So look at the look at the shape of it. Uh, some of the design features built into the shape. We've done shelves and beds and things. And up here on the roof, there's this funny looking thing it's got like a glass thing and vents around it and what's what's that all about ventilation yeah uh, it's one of the mistakes I made or okay. mistakes uh, the glass on top heats up and by heating it up it automatically sucks like a chimney yeah, uh, cool. there yeah uh, but maybe it heats up too much uh, so now I'm thinking about putting, uh, covering the top, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately then the light won't come in. Mm. Uh, or we're gonna use a ventilation system, uh, which basically makes sure that the air keeps ventilating. So the idea is that the hot air rises to the top of the dome and then it's got this vent so it can escape. It and because that hot air is going out, it's gonna draw cool air in. Yes. And in theory, that's great. From the bottom, you get the cool air, yeah. and the warm air rises, and yeah. then the circulation starts. And what you're finding is, there's too much heat up here. Well, actually, there wasn't any ventilation that sucks in the, the cold ah, air. Okay. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. we learn. Got to think of these things. Yeah. Right, so the next ones are going to have a, a different system. Well, uh, what we are doing now is we made a test of five different... Uh, we are going to use the pume stone from the Rinjani volcano. Okay. And it, it, it has the capacity of isolating like four times more. It's, it's super light rock. Okay. And they actually use, they see it as garbage. When they are uh, selecting rocks yeah. to sell, they see that uh, pume stone as garbage. Okay. And, um, so they're tossing it to the side, not selling it. Exactly. And you're going, and this is because of the air bubbles in it. 
Correct. It's really great insulation properties. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's up. To, we had one uh, sustainable engineer calculating how much better it would insulate. Wow. Uh, so using that in the in the walls, in the yes. bags. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And it makes and the building light. much lighter. Correct. Yeah. So it's easier to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and still going to give you a good solid home. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're we're going to build the new houses with that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Which is also going to prevent the house from from heating up. Yeah. Nice. So. Right on. Yeah. All right. So look, what's the what's the opportunity? What's the opportunity here on this? On this block with this project, you've got this test one built, and you've been living in it for a year, and it's mm -hmm. had some challenges, and you're sorting them out, and it's it's going great. Yeah. And we've got six that I can see here, small ones, and then a big one. Yeah. Or a couple of big ones. I just finished a drawing like last week. Wow! Right on. Happy with it? I'm very happy with it. Right on. It's massive. It's uh, it's they're getting more complicated and more. Uh, you can really see my learning curve. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was still bound to this little dome shape. And the more I was starting to draw and design the new houses, I was thinking in levels and extra bedrooms and outdoor showers and getting crazy with it. Yeah. Right on. And now it's going to be a two-story, uh, and underneath is a, of course, is a fin infinity pool, and underneath mm. that is a co-workation, a restaurant. Beautiful. So it's going to be built on a restaurant. Beautiful. With a lot of. We've got some of them. Yeah, I've got some interest already, and some are pre-sold. I understand. Yeah, already? well, the ones that I'm designing was for a client okay. that was already ordering it. So how many domes here when we're all done? When we're all done? Yeah, when it's all finished. <laughs> well, we wanted to build 30 uh, houses wow. in the beginning. And we, we, it's almost ridiculous. Like, besides filling it up, and you can already see how much we have to uh, compress because they have a huge footprint. Um, which is perfectly fine, but on our land it's pretty narrow. Uh, yeah. It's kind of challenging to make it all fit. Mm -hmm. And I personally really like it that it has all these different levels yeah. and niches and yeah, corners really cool. and gardens and steps. And uh, so but at the, yeah, at the moment we can uh, sell two more houses in the front, mm -hmm. and our best plots and our most beautiful view is all the way on top. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna sell it save that for the last but at the moment it's 14 houses yeah nice in different shapes sizes yeah. so who would who would who would live here who would just go oh that's that's perfect i mean you mentioned building some up the top for you know a couple with maybe a couple of kids and you mentioned young couples or your single people what's what's going on in their head when they're living in the cities or the suburbs or they're traveling or they're who's who's this for in europe you know and of course anybody could Go, oh, that's, that sounds great, but what's your, what's your best guess on that or what's your, what's your take on that? Actually, this is not uh, made for living. Uh-huh. No. Okay. No. So our core concept is that we build houses yep. for any given client. They can live here one month a year. Okay. It's uh, shared. We manage everything. Basically, wow. from the building and development, the design, uh, the resort, uh, the utilities, um, but we rent it out to guests. Mm -hmm. It's basically an eco resort. Beautiful. So, and we share the profits 50 50. Yeah, nice. A good deal. But what we want is that people invest in a green project yep. without having any sorrows. So, yeah, no legal perfect. issues, no uh, worries about a crack in the ceiling or uh, sheets that need to be replaced or um, a staff that needs to be managed or. Yeah. Basically, they can enjoy this place for a, a period of one month a year, yep. or they could live here longer. But yeah, of course, just we, rent it out and yeah, yep. Um, and that's we'll actually what we found. Price, essentially, because they're getting half Correct. of their own rent back as their yes return anyway. Yeah. Uh, but we see already that our most the four houses that are sold are all Swedish people. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the house in front is are two Singapore couples. Mm -hmm. The house on top is a, sing a guy from Singapore and a couple from Switzerland. Wow. So these people are, they have good jobs, they can afford a place like this. They, they find a, a, a place on this island and you haven't seen the view from the top yet. It's, mm. it's, we have one of the best views on the island. Wow. And these are people that work, so they don't yeah. have much more time than three, four sure. weeks a year that they can actually be here, surf, hang out. So. For them, it's a very appealing concept yeah, because nice. they want to invest in a green project. It's a 50-year lease, yep. which is almost too good to be true. 
and we give a warranty for 50 years. So, uh, and in all honesty, we wanted to do that to prevent investor islands. So you get, well, if people have a house and we let them decide when they renovate something after 10 uh, years, or yeah, they need yeah, to replace yeah. a solar panel, or they need to replace yeah. a battery bank, or they might say, oh, I'm gonna wait one more year and we can't rent out the house. Yeah, sure. And plus we wanna be a four star resort, so we wanna keep the quality very high. Yeah. So we so run. You get a say in that. You run, the, you run the business. We run the business, yep. and we make sure we keep the high standard, and we Perfect. make sure everything keeps, stays green. That, that's good for everybody, then. That's good for the whole. Yes. The whole project. Yeah, it makes total sense. I love it, man. I yeah. think this is just a super cool, super cool concept, and we see so much about this, so much sustainability built into this. That's yep. really smart. So really cool, sustainable project. Um, and think of that. You know what? Because I know you've got some thoughts on this. So tell me about your view on sustainability and what, what that means to you. Like I said in the beginning, we were discussing a lot about this, uh, what our sustainable approach would be. And we were discussing if we should import hemp instead of plastic. Mm -hmm. And we were, and very soon you realize that even the transport to get the hemp into the country is kind of using more resources than actually using locally a little thin layer of plastic. So for me, sustainability or building sustainable has to do with um, making sure that it lasts as long as possible with mm -hmm. at least impact on the environment. And I think the unique part about our project is that we combine almost all the concept so yes we have solar panels yes we have water solar heating we have water filtration bio sand filters uh, water rainwater catchment because yep. especially in Lombok it is very hard during the dry season to maintain your water flow we have all these beautiful gardens here and we need to make sure that we catch as much rainwater and filter as much gray black water as we can mm -hmm. so of course we use the gray and black water to the nutrition is for the permaculture gardens mm -hmm. We have an aquaponic system that feeds the nursery. The fish eat the nutrients of the uh, of the the plants mm -hmm. and vice versa. And um, it's so cool how that works. It just still blows my mind. They yeah. feed each other. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like and it's so close. So it's such a nice close system. Yeah. And the permaculture we're going to have works very soon. We have one permaculture specialist. Uh, so we want to grow uh, off-grid. We want to grow uh, our own vegetables. We have a restaurant wow. in the future. Of course, this is not going to be enough for uh, the whole restaurant. Sure. But the idea is to have workshops here and also rent out the domes and make sure that people, more and more people get used with this concept of permaculture. Wow. So we can come in and stay here for a holiday and not just stay in a really cool zone, dome, zone, <laughs> in a really cool dome, in a really beautiful location. But it's actually an education for me as well. We could learn about sustainability, can learn about food, permaculture, construction. I mean, there's so much yeah. here that you're going to be teaching. Wow, and, cool. Uh, the main thing is that, or my interest also for sustainability, or uh, is that I wanted to create this off-grid resort. Yeah. And off-grid, quite literally, whether it's energy, water management, uh, food production. Mm -hmm. Uh, or and a cool place to live. Yeah, uh, it's super important that we are creating this little bubble here. Mm. And even the power shirt, it's so tempting to use electricity, which is already available. But there's so many power cuts and so many power failures. So I think it would be very cool if this resort is lighting up when everyone else is. Yeah, going dark. And. By now, it's still expensive to, especially importing solar panels, yeah. uh, is very expensive. But in 10, 15 years' it's time, I think it's going to be very, the very... import tax, right? Correct. Yeah. We found out because I wanted to import a container, and we found out that it's very, very hard and very expensive to yeah. import. So what have you, have you found some, some solutions around that? Yeah, we basically have to order it from Bali or from Java. Okay. So we found local manufacturers for the solar? We have to. Yeah. And they're, they're sufficient enough quality? I'm surprised that not so many people in Lombok are already doing it. This is going to be one of the biggest solar uh, for the six houses in the yeah. south of Lombok. Wow. And they have so much sun. So much sun, yeah. Yeah, but, it totally uh, makes sense. Yeah, but 
now the Western or Bule people are uh, developing here in this part of Lombok. It's only since five or ten years that it's coming up. Yeah. And now it's really, really booming. You can literally hear the engines in the we back. You can hear the construction happening. The land yeah. next to us is sold last year. The land in front of us is, is bought last year. The land here is bought a year ago. Mm -hmm. So nice. we have this unique place. And yeah. you can see that more and we more have this. This view forever, though. There's nothing they can put down there that's gonna, that's gonna worry this in the, in the least. It's fantastic. I, hope you can. No, look, I mean, I love it. This is because what we want to know is what's really going on, right? Yeah. And and that's and there's for sure there's always going to be challenges. Yeah. And what I love about this whole thing is that you you've let me know what the challenges are and what you're doing about them and how you're solving them and how you're working around it and how you've I mean you've been here for a year living here. Yeah. So it's you know it's totally workable and. Um, and plenty, plenty to do. And credit to you, man. It's a really cool project. I'm super impressed. And it's just, it's just stunning. You know, it's just exquisite. Not only the view, but the, you know, what you've created here. It's cool. really beautiful. Thanks. So stoked. Um, I'm super happy. Any, any last final thoughts, comments, observations before we wrap up? Anything else I forgot to ask? Anything you'd love to share? I just think that. Um, I'm still a young guy. The guys, all of us, we're 34, 33, 31, 37. Yeah. So we're not the young generation, but we're still in the position of actually doing this. Mm -hmm. We have the interest. And I hope more and more people see the importance of trying to do the best you can within your circle of capacity. Well, what is actually mm -hmm. possible? And you can have big dreams, but what is concrete like when what is actually possible for yeah. you to do yeah so we are so happy that we found already investors that make this actually happen yeah and i hope to find more people that get interested in it in this so project cool. that's i mean that's the whole thing for me it's like what can i do right here right now with who i am with the resources i've got with where i am in the world what can i actually do to make a difference and that's how this whole thing came about and it's kind of the whole message too for anybody who's watching this what can you actually do? Because it's great, like you say, to have these big dreams and to have these big visions and there's plenty of you know, documentary films and plenty of people talking about the problems that we're facing and for sure humanity's facing some, some real serious challenges in this generation. Mm -hmm. um, and all the solutions we need for those problems already exist. They've already been created and it's just up to each of us now to go, well, I'm gonna play my part. And yeah. what's my part in, this, in, in you know, sorting this stuff out? What's it gonna be? Yeah. So credit to you for, for jumping in and going, this is going to be my part, I'm doing this. And you, you know, I'm you get to live it. here. As, <laughs> and it's always the way everyone I speak to who's actually gone, you know what, I'm just going to play my part. They're loving life. They go, this is awesome. This is so much better than that, that crappy job and all the stress and all the stuff that I was dealing with before. Now I'm dealing with, there's other challenges and other problems coming up, but loving it and the fulfillment in that. Is Absolutely, huge. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, right it's exactly how... I, how I experienced this whole uh, stage in life. For me, this is a fantastic opportunity to, and this is such a nice playground to mm. experiment and, and try different versions, uh, like especially the water filtration. And uh, there's so many challenges to, to get fresh water on this hilltop. And mm. that's when I get really excited to find my own uh, solution. Figure this out. Yes, exactly. Right on. Sonny Anson, I'm so glad we could take the time to get connected. It's great to meet you finally and, and be connected and have this time together. You and, too. Um, Thank man, you so much for, for coming. Being you and doing what you do. Rock yeah. on. Thank right you on. too.